Prepare yourself to be astounded because the news of today is nothing less than a roller coaster trip filled with mind blowing updates. Not only do we have plans that will leave you speechless, but we also have political showdowns and some eye popping statistics that will keep you on the edge of your seat. In this exhilarating show, we are going to go into a universe where payments of $1,770, border bills, and approval ratings all come into conflict with one another. This is the information that you ought not to overlook. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Stimulus Updates, your go-to channel for the most recent news and updates on various monetary and fiscal stimulus initiatives. Today, I am Ali, your host, and I am pleased to inform you of some exciting new developments that have occurred. Before we get into the updates for today, however, make sure that you click the box that says subscribe and that you enable the notification bell so that you are never left out of any information regarding stimulus-related topics. During these trying times, we are here to keep you informed and to give you the power to make decisions. All right, let's get right down to business. Just for a moment, picture yourself receiving payments of $1,770 every single day, regardless of your existing financial situation as a social security beneficiary. There's a new plan in town that wants to make everyone's wallet a little bit heavier, and it doesn't matter if you're on the verge of drinking champagne or if you're just about to tighten your belt. In this discussion, we are discussing a flat rate system that has the potential to completely transform the way we think about social security benefits. Having said that, let's get down to the nitty gritty of this proposition. The information regarding two possible alternatives is revealed by CNBC. To begin, we have the option of paying social security benefits at a rate that is equal to 150% of the federal poverty line. This would result in the monthly benefit amount being approximately $1,770 that is fixed. By setting benefits at 125% of the federal poverty line, which would amount to around $1,480 per month, the second alternative proposes that benefits be placed at that level. However, wait on. Despite the fact that this has the potential to be a game changer for individuals who are currently receiving substandard benefits, it does raise some problems. Is it equitable to distribute the same amount to each and every person, irrespective of the amount that they have contributed to the system? We would want to get your thoughts on this topic because it is now a hot topic. Please leave a comment below and let us know whether you are in favor of social security equality or whether you think the system that is already in place should be maintained. Now that we've shifted gears, let's talk about the highly anticipated border measure that is generating quite a stir in the legislative sphere. The Senate has finally announced a long-awaited agreement that contains provisions to increase the criteria for screening asylum seekers, speed up the processing of claims, and put an end to the practice of capture and release. To add insult to injury, some insiders are already proclaiming it dead in the House of Representatives, despite the fact that it has not even been put to a vote in the Senate. In this circumstance, Republicans who are known to be the most vociferous critics are not holding back. They are describing the law as utterly incomprehensible and have indicated that they have no intention of voting on it. In any case, what exactly is it that is producing such a commotion within this contentious bill? The supplemental budget of $18 billion addresses a variety of foreign policy issues, including border security, assistance for Israel and Ukraine, and other items. On the other hand, just a small portion, approximately $20 billion, is designated for border security. We are in possession of the specifics on the reasons why Republicans are not supporting it. And is not a beautiful picture. For the time being, let us transfer our attention to the political arena. We are in possession of the most recent information 
regarding the approval ratings of President Joe Biden. To put it another way, this is hardly exactly a victory lap. As a result of the results of interactive surveys, the approval rating of Vice President Joe Biden has dropped to 37 percent, while the disapproval rating has skyrocketed to 60 percent. It hurts. There is also a negative impact on the economy, as only 36 percent of Americans are satisfied with the job that Biden is doing in that field. Members of the Republican Party who hold high-ranking positions, including as Mitch McConnell and John Thun, have expressed their doubts about whether or not the plan will receive sufficient support to pass the Senate. Into the picture comes Chip Roy, who expressed his concerns about the expansion of the welfare state, particularly with regard to individuals who are in the country illegally. He emphasized the possible adverse effects on the economy, stating that such laws could encourage people to be in the United States illegally, so contributing to the existing issue at the border. Situation is getting more intense as Republicans in the Senate are demanding either an open amendment process or a comprehensive finance committee hearing. Their position is that they will not support the law if they are not given the option to propose and vote on modifications. This would make it a very difficult effort to obtain the 60 votes that are required. The hypothetical matchup between Biden and Trump, on the other hand, will be when things start to become very interesting. It would appear that when it comes to issues like as border control, the economy, and dealing with crime and violence, Trump is the most popular candidate. The numbers are more than sufficient evidence. A dominating lead on the border, with 57% of the vote to 22% to 22-point lead on the economy, with 55% to 33% and a 20-plus point lead on crime and violence, with 50% to 29% are all attributes that Trump possesses. We are here to help you understand all that is going on since the dynamics are changing. Let's get back to the drama around the border bill. The book has been presented, the drama has been acted out, and now it is time to present the cold, hard facts. The supplemental budget of $18 billion comprises $60 billion for Ukraine, $14.1 billion for aid to Israel, and an agreement concerning border security that is supported by all parties. Doesn't that sound fantastic? So, let's not rush things. The United States government has allotted only $20 billion out of that enormous sum for the purpose of border security. The Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, is not pulling any punches when he describes the border bill as being considerably more serious than was anticipated. We will dissect the specifics, and then it will be up to you to judge whether or not this measure is a genuine proposal or merely a political smokescreen. At this point, 